Here's our curly grammar, but now I've added a new line, the lambda line. We're going to consider just lambdas with functions that take one argument, in the same way that we had only functions that take a, a single argument when we had define. But we're throwing out define, we're only going to have expressions. For now, I'm leaving the function call form as it was, but it's going to turn out to be not quite right. Here we're calling a function by using the function name and an argument expression. So let's look at evaluation, how that has to work with our extended grammar. If we evaluate 10, we should get 10 back. If we evaluate y by itself, and not inside any sort of let or lambda, then we will get a free variable error as before. Plus should continue to add, times should continue to multiply, let should continue to bind a variable to the result of some right hand side. So x here is 7, and when we add it to 2, uh, then conceptually what happens is that we substitute that 7 in place of the x, add uh, 7 to 2 that way to get 9. How about lambda by itself? What should the result be? Well, it can't be just a number. Uh, it's, it is just the function. There's nothing more we can say about it. So we need uh, an interp that supports some results that are functions as well as results that are numbers. In the case of a lambda, before the lambda is called, there's nothing more we can do. We have to wait for an argument to do anything. So we just need to return the function. So that means we need to change our interp to take an expression and return not a number, but a value, where a value is either a number or a function, so we're going to have a new data type. Let's look at one more example, though, before we talk about the, the value data type. What if we say let y be 10 in uh, this lambda? Well, again, conceptually, we are substituting y with 10, so that is the same as the function plus x uh, that takes a, an x and does plus 10x. How about if we let f be this function that takes an x and adds 1 to it, and then apply f to 3? Again, conceptually, we should replace f with its value from the right-hand side, with the lambda. So we would get to this point. Now there's a couple of curly braces here. It can look confusing. This curly brace means function call. This curly brace goes with the lambda to make a function. So this is calling a function on 3, and it should make sense. We should get a 4. but uh, you know, just to highlight the parts, we put that blue part right in place of the F here, where the green curly braces are the same. The problem, though, is that this doesn't fit into the grammar of curly. Curly's grammar says you have open curly brace and then a word for the function name. And we actually implement let using environments, so that might not be a problem, but it would be awkward and inconsistent, it turns out. You know, substitution is our notion of truth, which we implement using environments, but environments have to match substitution. And so if we have a lambda where have a language where substitution doesn't work, it turns out things do not work nicely in the end. So we're going to fix the grammar for exp to, uh, to solve this problem. I'm going to throw out this line that I warned you wasn't quite right, and we just have any expression applied to any expression. So this curly brace means function call still, but we can put any expression, like a lambda, a name which is maybe the argument to another function, some arbitrarily complicated expression that produces a function to apply to another expression. That means this works out. Conceptually, we replace this f here with its lambda, and so we get left left lambda. That is a function call of a function to an argument 3. So conceptually, we substitute 3 in for x to get plus 1, 3, and we should end up with 4, just as you expected. If we let f to be a function that adds 1 to its argument and call it on 3, we expect a 4 out in the end. We could also write, literally, left curly, left curly, lambda, uh, that whole thing applied to 3, and it, we should still get 4. Right? These two programs should be completely equivalent. So we'll have to make our uh, interp function do that. What if, since we allow arbitrary expressions, what if we write open curly 1 space 2? What should happen then? Should we add the numbers? Should we multiply them? The problem here is that this curly brace means function call, and 1 is not a function. So we should get an error back, not a function. Similarly, if we have a plus, and we give it a number and a function as an argument, then we should get not a number as a result. Right? In plate, these are type errors. You get a type time error. Um, but in curly, these are going to be runtime errors. Our interpreter will, will complain if you ask it to add a number to a function once it discovers that addition.